All right, guys. So in my previous video of system design series, I discussed relational databases concepts at a high level. In this video, we'll be discussing ACID transactions and indexes. Now, ACID is an acronym that refers to the set of four key properties that define a transaction. And they are atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Now, if a database operation has all these ACID properties, it can be called an ACID transaction. Now, what exactly is a transaction? A transaction is a single unit of work, which consists of maybe one SQL query or multiple SQL queries. Let's say we have two accounts, account one and account two, and you have to transfer $100 from account one to account two. So typically a transaction will consist of various steps here. Check if the account one has the amount available. Second step would be to deduct the $100 from the account one, and then you basically add that $100 to account two. All these three steps constitute one single transaction. Now, if any one of the steps fail here, the entire transaction will fail. So for example, if adding $100 to account two fails, the entire transaction will fail. And that is what basically the meaning of the first property of ACID, atomicity, which says entire transaction must finished or you revert the database to an old state. Consistency ensures that transactions only make changes to tables in a predefined way. By predefined ways, I mean data integrity constraints must be followed. So for example, in this payments table, I have this column amount. So one of the constraints could be the amount should always be positive. It cannot become negative. And that is what consistency ensures. Let's talk about isolation. Isolation basically applies when multiple users are reading and writing from the same table all at once. Isolation of their transaction ensures that all these concurrent transactions don't interfere or affect one another. So if you have an account with $1,000 in it and two persons A and B are trying to access that account and withdraw money from it at the same time, let's say $100 and $1,000, the cumulative effect could be that the entire money, the total amount is reduced to a negative 100. And isolation prevents that from happening. It ensures when there are concurrent transactions, the cumulative effect is such that the transactions were run sequentially. So here in our example, only one person would be able to withdraw at one time. So let's say person B withdraws $1,000 from the account. Now that the account is zero, person A won't be allowed to withdraw $100. And finally, the fourth property durability ensures that once the transaction are committed, they are persisted in a non-volatile memory. It ensures that the changes to your data made by successfully executed transactions will be saved even in the event of a system failure. All the major databases are ACID compliant and that's all you need to know about ACID when it comes to system design interviews. Let's talk about the second most important property of relational databases when it comes to system design, indexes. Now to understand database indexes, let's take the same example for payments table. In the payments table, we have customer name, amount, and so many other fields. Now, if I have to search for a customer who paid the maximum amount, I would have to go through each of the rows sequentially one by one. And as you can imagine, if it's a million records table, it's gonna take good amount of time because it's a sequential or a linear search. Database indexes are these auxiliary data structure which are optimized for fast search on a specific column. So for example, in this case, I can create a database index on the amount attribute or the column. What it means is I create another table where the amounts are in a sorted order. This auxiliary table is then pointed to our main payments table so that the amounts are pointing to the corresponding records. Now with the database index on the amounts column, I can quickly find the customer who has paid the maximum amount in a constant time. One index on a table is not a big deal. You automatically have an index on columns or combination of columns that are primary keys or declared as unique. However, there is some overhead to an index as they require extra memory. The downside to adding indexes to a table is that they affect the performance of writes. Moreover, improperly created indexes can even adversely affect select queries. Any table configuration where performance suffers due to excessive or missing indexes is considered to be poor indexing. Now, a small number of indexes on each table is reasonable. These, however, should be designed with a typical query load in mind. 
If you end up indexing every column in every table, then data modifications will eventually slow down. Now, database indexes might look really easy when you are starting with them, but they are a very vast and complicated topic. There are different types of database indexes, bitmap, reverse, demographic indexes, and whatnot. But the good news is you don't need to know any of them for a system design interview. However, you must know that there is a concept of indexes. Apart from that, this is all you need to know when it comes to system design.